Lucy Longhurst. Welcome to a special edition of Cybernet. Today we're going to show you some of the highs, the lows and absolute no-nos of the year. So come with me as we take a look at some of the best features we've crammed into the last 12 months. We begin with a look at robots. They're everywhere, from the latest films to your favourite games. But whilst they're certainly fascinating, just how close are we to seeing robots in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, Cybernet decided to find out and discovered that robots are fast becoming reality. Just look at Abo here, one of the most advanced robots you can buy. But whilst he may look incredibly cool, does he act like a real dog or is he simply a fancy Furby? To find out, we decided to take an Abo owner and his pet to the park. What's so special about Abo is the fact that unlike a lot of other robots that are remote controlled, he actually learns and can start to develop his own behaviours and personality. Like a real pet, he goes through different development stages. He learns and he starts off as a puppy and he can't really walk and he starts to learn. And the more you interact with him, the more things he will do. Eventually he can play with his ball and go and fetch sticks. He also shows emotions including sadness, happiness and even fear. So are the days of normal pets numbered? I think for some people they might replace real pets uh, because they don't require looking after, they don't require feeding, they don't make a mess. And as they get become more sophisticated, then there'll be the opportunity for them to perform more functions in the home. Well, we think he'd make a lovely pet. In fact, we love the little robotic rascal, so, um, I don't suppose you'd, well... No, I wouldn't consider selling him. Well, it was worth a try. OK, so robotic pets are definitely here to stay, but they're not exactly practical. What we wanted to see was a robot doing a bit of hard work. So we travelled to London Bridge to meet Cynthia, a cocktail waitress with a difference. Cynthia's a robot that um, basically mixes cocktails for people that come into our bar. And she can mix up to 75 cocktails, uh, all within about 90 seconds. Impressive, but why would people want a bionic barmaid? I guess they see a lot of science fiction films and they want to see how far technology has, has actually come along. And basically I think it's a novelty factor with, with robots. People just love to see mechanical things and how things work and, and sometimes maybe they hope they make mistakes, but I always don't often do that. So robots can be cute and they can be practical, but they still don't look like all those androids I've seen at the movies. Fortunately, one company is turning science fiction into science fact. This is Honda's P3, quite possibly the most complex robot in the world. Created in 1986, the P3 has been designed to walk just like a real person. So instead of simply moving in a given direction, it can actually alter its movements, allowing it to overcome obstacles just as a human would. Robots will always be amazing simply because they're constantly improving. Will they replace humans? Well, perhaps, but we think they've still got a long way to go. Isn't that right, Abo? Charming. Definitely a class act. Next, some more magic, this time on the internet. Magic and technology may not seem ideally suited, but on the internet there's a wealth of trickery and illusion to be discovered. So whether you're an amateur conjurer or just a wide-eyed spectator, you'll find there's a huge variety of magic at your fingertips. sites to search for are of less famous professionals eager to demonstrate their skills over the net. The enigmatically named Magic Chris, for example, has a showcase of his tricks for you to download. If this encourages you to learn a little sleight of hand, there are even more places on the web willing to show you the basics. to experience some magic rather than learn how it's done, there are just as many sites willing to amaze and confound you. At itrix.com, there's an extensive gallery of optical illusions to fool your mind. But for true interactive wizardry, try trendy magic for cunning tricks like this one. Pick a card and whisper its name to yourself again and again. Keep whispering while I read your mind. Keep whispering. And presto, the card you were whispering has disappeared. Magic. Confused? You should be. And here's another great feature to get your head around. 
In the heart of England, something's stirring. A game's being made. A game like no other. A game of creatures, chaos and carnage. A game that's taken 18 people nearly three years to make and has become one man's life. He's called Peter Molyneux and the game is black and white. What we've done in the last six months is really concentrate on the story. And so that slowly as the game goes on, the story unfolds. And the unique thing about the story is the way that you can approach any of the little bits of the story and solve them however you like. In the game, you're a god and can interact with everything, even the landscapes. Early on, you'll adopt a creature who represents you in the world. Amazingly, his appearance and the world around you changes according to how you choose to play the game, whether you're good or bad. This creature has personality and actually learns from you. He remembers what you do to him and reacts accordingly every time you play. You also control the lives of hordes of little people in your world. And just like Peter, you can choose to treat them well or badly, always remembering to make sure they know who's boss. Well, the little people are your resources. They're your fodder, if you like. The more of them you have, the more powerful you are. The more that believe in you, the more powerful you are as a god. The less you have, the less powerful you are. Now, you can choose to look after them or you can choose to, to exploit them. It's completely up to you. And so the big challenge really is to really run the world in the way you want it run. It's fun treating your people badly, but treat them well and they'll worship you, giving you more powerful spells. We ask the game's testers what's better, being good or being bad. If you want to be good within the game, the creature can help by... Uh, building, uh, giving food to the villagers, giving wood to the villagers, dancing with the villagers, lots of things. And what about being bad? I think being evil is definitely going to be the most fun, for sure. And I think that's what a lot of people will choose, is to be evil. Throwing people in the sea, that's a good thing to do. Killing the animals with your creature and eating them. Stoning, that's also a good thing to do as well. So gamers finally have an intelligent, responsive game, but Peter won't stop there. I get to... to put the visions in my head into reality and there just cannot be a better thing to do than that. Look out for even more incredible news about black and white soon. This really could be the greatest game ever made. Rawr. Don't go away, there's still loads more to come as we showcase the highs and not so lows of a year in the life of Cybernet. Part 2 of Cybernet. If you love football, there are hundreds of video games to keep you happy. From management simulations to arcade action, you can enjoy all types of soccer fun. But Euro League Football was a new title for the PC that'll put the player in control of a club both on and off the pitch. In an effort to find out more about the game, Cybernet travelled to one of the most picturesque and historical cities in Europe. Madrid is situated in the middle of Spain and is famous for its fine weather and culture. But it's also home to two of the biggest football clubs on the continent, Atletico and Real. In the suburbs of the city, we found developers Dynamic Multimedia hard at work. No, they weren't finishing the game, but trying to improve their own soccer skills. Persuading one of the producers to stop practicing his free kicks and tell us more wasn't easy, but when we took away his ball, he was more than happy to talk. Basically, Euro League has been designed to give the football fan everything that they want. We've put in the arcade side for, so people that want to play the game, they want to like control Emil Heskey or Steve Guppy, and they want to run down the pitch, make runs across us, they can do that. And by the same token, the people that want to sell Steve Guppy and like replace him with Ginella, they're able to do that in the complete management side. We try to basically put as much as we can in one box that the normal average football fan can pick it up, install it, play it and think, yes, this is football. Sounds great, but to see just how much the Spanish love their football, we went to the home of Real Madrid. Four hours before kickoff, we managed to sample some pre-match atmosphere. 
With its passionate Spanish influence, the game included masses of detailed information that covered all the major European leagues. But there was more. You could access a vast historical database and also take part in a soccer quiz. Overall, Euro League football wasn't the strongest soccer title of the year, but serious fans of the sport loved the chance to be a star player manager. Enough games now. Last year wasn't just about software. We unveiled tons of amazing new hardware, too. Mobile communications have come a long way in the past few years, and on Cybernet, we've shown you some amazing visions of the future. The most up-to-date mobile phone available today is this one. It uses something called Bluetooth, and if you don't know what it is, listen up. Here's the science bit. Bluetooth is a combination of software and hardware that allows different devices to communicate and operate wirelessly. For example, you can dial a phone number, don a lightweight headset and roam around without being tied to your mobile. Or you can use a Bluetooth phone to surf the internet with a laptop and phone discreetly hidden away inside your briefcase. Very useful. But what if you want more from your mobile communication device? What if you'd like one that's tailored to your personal needs? Well, there's a lot of research being done at the moment to find out exactly what we, the public, want from this new technology in the future. One such source of this research is the website Connected Planet. Here, three scenarios show you what kind of communication devices people could be using in two to five years' time and how they'll improve our lives. In a few cases, the technology already exists to manufacture some of these products and the rest is just around the corner. This is a communication gadget that makes a mobile phone look like a relic from the Dark Ages. With a special pen, it can read handwriting and wirelessly transfer it into the device. It also allows users to send voice messages and email during meetings. Very handy if you want to catch family and friends on the move. Mobile devices of the future will be versatile too and have more than one function, so don't think gamers will be forgotten. Using close proximity sensors, players will be able to enjoy games together without connecting cables. Another incredible mobile device being developed is this one that contains a personal navigation system. Once you've found what you're looking for, you can take a digital picture and then send it anywhere in the world. So if you're the kind of person who couldn't find the 300-meter-tall Eiffel Tower, the future looks rosy as these devices promise to make your life a lot easier. And if you can't wait to get your hands on them, log on and tell the manufacturers. You could be enjoying them sooner than you think. Oh, all right, you want more games? Well, we had them. Here's a look at the newest consoles from Japan. There's a three-horse race coming, and you're going to have to decide who wins. A trio of new machines are on their way, but which one are you going to take home? To help you decide, we had a chat with each of the companies involved, and unsurprisingly, they all had great hopes for their machines. PlayStation 2, as far as Sony are concerned, is, it should be more successful than PlayStation 1. The Xbox is the most powerful video game console that's ever been designed. If you're looking for the best console for the next generation of video games, look to Nintendo GameCube. Uh, confused? Well, don't panic, because we at Cybernet are here to give you the wider picture, with a quick view of what those consoles have to offer. First of all, PlayStation 2. Out almost a year before the other machines, the PS2 won't be as powerful as the GameCube or Xbox. However, with the track record of the classic PlayStation behind it, it's still sure to attract many admirers. PlayStation and PlayStation 2 that have established themselves really in the minds of uh, games players out there at the moment. Everyone knows that PlayStation had the most games on the machine and that certainly will be the case with PlayStation 2. But also, PlayStation allowed developers to break new ground in the creativity on the games. And we expect nothing less than that on PlayStation 2 as well. The machine is going to allow you to do all kinds of things. And at the moment, it also adds the benefit of being able to play DVD movies. But whilst it'll certainly produce enough titles, will they be any good? 
Sony openly admits that its console isn't purely for games and prefers to call the new machine an entertainment center. With the emphasis no longer only on gaming, our worry is that Sony will simply update old classics like Tekken and produce very few original titles. However, PS2 does, of course, have the millions of PlayStation owners to base its hopes on. Microsoft, on the other hand, are hoping that the stunning specifications of its Xbox will make it number one. However, with no experience in the console market, where are all those great games going to come from? Well, apparently, Microsoft's got that one covered. Our focus with developers is going to be very, very heavily influenced by third parties. We worked with the gaming industry in designing Xbox. It's a game system by developers for developers that's really intended for the entire market and industry to move forward. So we're partnering with software developers in Japan, all over Europe, in Scandinavia, and North America to bring the most exciting content to Xbox. But whilst the Xbox will have to depend on other companies to produce top titles, Nintendo is simply making it easier for outside developers. Its new machine, GameCube, has finally made the move to CD from expensive cartridges, and it's made the machine far simpler to program. Oh, and its games aren't bad either. What makes the Nintendo GameCube unique compared to our competition is that it's a box that's targeted solely at gaming. We're not trying to be a home multimedia internet appliance. All Nintendo has been about for 100 years is gaming and entertainment, and that's all GameCube is for, entertainment. Nintendo will bring all of the games that you expect from Nintendo, whether it's Mario, Zelda, Yoshi. We previewed uh, Metroid that was very well received from people. So Nintendo has a lot of character franchises and really strong titles. So Nintendo has a history of producing fantastic games. Xbox looks set to be the most powerful, and PlayStation 2, well, it'll be here first. But before you choose, we suggest you check out the games. After all, that's what makes a great console. And of course, Cybernet will be there to review every one of them. What a year! OK, here's our competition to win a console. We hope you enjoyed our highlights, but it's not over yet. Things don't always go to plan on Cybernet, so take a look at the crew, some familiar faces, and what we get up to behind the scenes. Goodbye.